The good news, welcome back. Good news indeed. Lose weight without giving up your favorite food. Sounds impossible. Here to explain is registered dietitian from the Cleveland Clinic, Amy Jameson Patonic. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm well. So when I put that butter in the oil to make the Wiener Schnitzel today, you must have been going through hysterics uh, or some kind of. David. You were David. freaking out, right? I was. I was. Well, you know, the governor Arnold said, "Look, it's not healthy, but it's a treat once in a while." So, Absolutely. So you have to really take care of your diet all the time, so you can have that treat once in a while. Right. So help me. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about recipe substitutions that are not going to see any difference in taste, but they're going to taste fabulous. You're not going to beat me, are you? I am going to beat you, and two-thirds cup of fresh grated beets in place of sugar in your recipe, and you can reduce that fat and calories in your recipe and just limit it to about a quarter of a cup of sugar, and the beets add a great sweetness. Okay, give me an example and tell me what I have to do with the beets to do it. So anytime you've got a recipe where you're going to use sugar, you can reduce that just by taking your beets, putting them in a food processor, grating them up, and and adding them to your recipe. They're going to add moistness, they're going to add flavor and sweetness. So I don't have to roast them first? No. You just sort of peel them you and then grate them? You peel them fresh and grate them, grate them raw and then put them into your recipe. They're fantastic. And how much beets per, how much sugar you say? I'd say about two-thirds cup of grated beets and reduce, it reduces the sugar to about a quarter of a cup. Okay. Well, it makes sense because some people make sugar out of beets, right? Right. Absolutely. Okay, great. What's next? And then we've got our white beans. So if you bean it up, like with either cannellini beans or black beans, you blend them up in a food processor with a little bit of water. You can use this in place of fat or oils in your recipe, and beans are a great source of B vitamins and dietary fiber. Oh, so and when you and so this is the addition of starch then instead of. It, you can actually use this in place of an oil to give it a nice moistness mm -hmm. and a flavor without the fat and the calories. Okay, and there's probably that translates into sugars down the road a absolutely, little bit too. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, great. And what could this be? Well, this Gin? is actually vodka. No, no. What, tequila. No. Okay, um, try again. What we're doing is a diet soda swap. So this is actually where you fizz it up. So you use a 12 ounce can of diet soda in your cake recipe, and it adds a lot of moistness to it without fat or calories. And when you use your diet soda, you don't need oil. Wow. Yeah, isn't that great? Will Smith's wife uh, told me about that. She made a 7-Up cake. Absolutely. Same idea. So you use the 7-Up, and that replaces what? That replaces the fat and oil. So I use the diet because I'm a registered dietitian. So mm -hmm. we're looking at reducing the fat and the calories. That's why you look so good in your so thin. Thanks. Okay, I'm listening now. Okay. What's going on with this All chocolate? All right, so we've got our dark chocolate We're going off, the reservation, off yes. the reservation. But it's dark chocolate, so you're going to substitute one cup of mini morsels for two cups of dark chocolate morsels, and you spread it out, and you get all the flavor without the extra fat and calories. Oh, that's great. So how much do you save yourself in something like that? Uh, about a cup of dark chocolate, at least two to 300 calories. It's a lot. Yeah. Absolutely. How does two or three hundred uh, calories relate to uh, like some kind of exercise? Well, think about it this way: you would probably have to run three miles to burn three hundred calories. I'd much rather do this than run three miles. <laughs> right. I don't right. even like driving three miles. <laughs> Okay, what's going on here? Okay, so when you normally have recipes that have white flour, I would recommend using a 100% whole wheat flour in place of that because you're going to add 10 grams of dietary fiber to your recipe by adding a whole wheat flour. And this translates to sugar in a different way than the white does. Absolutely, but you're getting some more B vitamins and minerals from the whole wheat flour that you're not getting with the white flour where a lot of the vitamins and minerals have been stripped off. Okay, so if I'm going to go to the store again and buy flour, I can buy this whole wheat flour and I don't have to worry about also having the white flour in the house too? Absolutely. And you're going to substitute equal amounts of 100% whole wheat flour for the white flour. So this is dummy easy. It's super easy. Stupid simple. Stupid easy. Okay. What's going on here? Okay. So this is a substitute graham cracker crust for your regular crust. Not as much fat, not as much saturated fat or calories. So how do I use it as a crust? What do I do with well, it? Well, you'd substitute, you'd use your, you'd crush up the graham crackers. You'd use a little bit of uh, probably an egg or oil to make your graham cracker crust. But normal pie crusts have a lot of saturated fat and mm -hmm. trans fats and calories. This way you're going to save yourself a lot of fat and calories by using graham crackers. Okay, so I know when I make a crust with this, like a bottom crust and something, I mm -hmm. use, I could use margarine, but of course I use butter because look at me. <laughs> and you're saying I could do what instead? You can use the graham cracker crust, use a little bit of olive oil or canola oil for your butter so that you can get the good heart healthy fat. And then you use some egg white too, you said? You can use a little bit of egg white. I hope it holds it together Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely, it'll give it a little bit of the emulsifying effect. Okay, let's get sweet. Okay, agave. Love agave. Agave I do nectar. too. Yeah, isn't it great? Yeah. So agave is a lot sweeter than regular sugar, so you only need half as much in your recipe. And it's called a low glycemic index food, which really helps maintain healthy blood sugar levels for people with diabetes. You know, when you said it's sweeter, there is something about the flavor of this that makes it just a little bit better, I think. I it mean, really I like it. Does. Like, that's my favorite sweetener now. It, myself, myself as well. That's all I use. You know what else they make out of agave? What's that? Tequila. 
Okay. There we go. There's some good news, right? <laughs> yes, it hey, is. Hey, thank you very much, Amy. My pleasure. Beautiful. Thank you. Patonic, right? Patonic. I know. I saw I said patonic, patonic. It's like tomato, tomato, right? Exactly. Almost. Okay. Hey, New Day Cleveland continues right after this.